Hey there, welcome back to our tutorial series on literature brought to you by O3 Schools Jam app. And our topic for today is unexpected joy at dawn. This is a jam recommended book and we're going to analyze it. So first off, we'll look at the author. Unexpected Joy Had Done, published in 2003, was written by Alex Agui. Agui. Now we'll now look at the setting. Take note, setting has to do with location and time. And the book Unexpected Joy Had Done is set in West Africa. And the book alternates between Nigeria and Ghana. Those are the two major West African countries talked about in the book. And if we are dealing with time frame, we say this was during the post-colonial era. During the post-colonial era. So the book was set in West Africa between Nigeria and Ghana and then during the post-colonial era. Then we look at the characterization. Major characters in the book include Nitaki, his sister Mama Urujo, Joe, Aaron. Then minor characters. We have ebook. Let's say Massa. Tomonde. Tali O. Mashak. To mention but a few so these are the characters in the book unexpected joy at dawn then we'll look at the plot summary the book used a parallel plot and parallel plot has to do with a combination of two or more plots the book is about two siblings, that's Nitaki and Mama Orojo, separated by a deportation order. So Mama Orojo had to leave Ghana because of the deportation order. In one plot, Nitaki works in the bank and takes up other jobs as well in order to take care of his financial responsibilities, which chief among them is his sick wife. Now, the loss of his wife, coupled with alienation from the country where he was born and brought up in forces him to leave Ghana to Nigeria in search of his sister. So then the, books, the book goes on to show us his journey to Nigeria and what he faces on his arrival. And then in another plot, we see Mama Orojo, a successful businesswoman and a religious volunteer who goes on outreaches and trips to Ghana in order to look for her brother so the both plots are combined at the end with their reunion when mama rojo meets nitaki that's the plot summary then we have the themes first up we have the, the theme of xenophobia xenophobia simply means fear or hatred for foreigners so this theme is portrayed a lot in the book first off we see it in the deportation order that separates the siblings at first and then it's also portrayed in the fact that Ghanaians are not happy with nigerians and other foreigners among them same goes for nigerians too lashing out at the Ghanaians in their midst then we also have the theme of identity crisis This is portrayed in the life of Nitaki mostly. Nitaki is born 
he was born and brought up in ghana and qualifies as a ghanaian citizen but then he's not accepted majorly due to the tribal marks on his face that gives him the way that he's not of Ghanaian descent even though he has been living there all his life and then he goes to nigeria hoping to fully belong and be accepted you know finally i'm among my people but then he's unable to speak a nigerian language and then he's also already used to Ghanaian mannerisms so all those give him away and then he's also treated in nigeria like an alien so there's a theme of identity crisis majorly portrayed in the life of mitaki then we also have death the theme of death there are multiple deaths in the book the death of masa mitaki's wife the death of the cantamanto market the death of talio death of talio and finally even the death of aaron at the end of the book they are all symbolic so the theme of death is portrayed a lot in the book other themes we have insecurity we have pan-africanism pan-africanism separation religious intolerance and so on these are some of the themes that we have in the book unexpected joy are done and then let's look at some literary devices some literary devices involved in the books includes pov so the point of view there was the third person point of view we see it in the pronouns used in the book then we also have metaphor An example, he was still a tree stump. We have personification. Giving human characteristics to non-human objects. We have examples in the book. The dust played games with the wind. The door moved backwards. Then we have irony. Irony is, was also a literary device used in the book. We see situational irony. That means the opposite of what we expect actually happening that's situational irony we see it play out in the death of massa after holding out for a while like managing the sickness and then she dies on the way to the healer then there's also dramatic irony which is the audience are aware of something that the characters are not so we see it play out when nitaki walks in his sister's side for two days without pay so we, the readers, we know that he's working in his sister's side, but the characters do not know. So that's irony, examples of irony playing out in the book. And then there's also symbolism. Some characters and events in the book depict more than their literal meaning. For example, the sickness of Massa, that's Nis' wife, is symbolic. It represents the state of the economy. So that the economy is dying gradually the sickness of massa let's say massa's illness is symbolic then even the marriage between massa and me as well as the relationship between joe and mama orojo it symbolizes pan-africanism marriage between nigeria and ghana symbolizes pan-africanism then even the deaths the death of, for example, the Cantamanto market, once alive, you know, and bubbly with traders and buyers from different cultures, but now destroyed and lying in ruin, it symbolizes the continent, you know, the countries 
for example at least they were once peaceful but now they are now de being destroyed by political instability so there's the use of symbolism in the book unexpected joy at dawn so now let's take some questions First, we have what distinguishes Nitaki from the Ghanaians? His accent, his skin, his tribal mark, his face. We have his tribal mark. His tribal mark gives him away that he's not of Ghanaian descent. Then, how did Mama Orojo meet Tom Monday? First, we have A. She met him at a restaurant. She met him on her trip to Ghana. She met him during the religious riots. She met him on an evangelism trip. She met him on an evangelism trip. These questions are meant to test your attention to details. Questions like this. Before Joe became su successful in the illegal mining business, he had worked as A or an A-level teacher, apprentice to a tailor, whistleblower, banker at Experience Bank. He worked as an apprentice to a tailor before he went into the illegal mining business. Then the narrative technique used in the novel is best described as second person narrative technique, omniscience point of view, first person point of view, all of the above. We have second person narrative technique bringing the readers into the action, but it's not commonly used in prose. Then omniscient point of view is under the third person point of view, where a narrator tells the story, and the narrator is like able to tell us everything about the characters or the plot of the of the book of the work. We say it is an omniscient point of view, and the first point of view uses first person point of view uses first person pronouns like I, me, we. And it has to do with autobiographies. So our answer here is the third person point of view, which is the omniscient point of view. Then we have Age Agiri's unexpected joy at dawn is set in Kenya and Ghana, Nigeria and Kenya, Ghana and Nigeria, South Africa and Ghana. We have Ghana and Nigeria. Unexpected joy at dawn is set in Ghana and Nigeria. So these questions were pulled out from the O3 Schools Jam app. And there are many more questions that you can use to practice your way to your preferred score in whatever examinations you are preparing for. So do well to just download the app and start practicing. Thank you for watching.